Willie D. Live. You know, Rick trusts me when it comes to orchestrating and putting together these performances because that's the school I come from. You know, I learned things about performing that people will never learn. I used to I used to tour with the Gap Band with Confunction, Roger Zapp and Roger Troutman. You know what I'm saying? That was a point I was going to make, too. You have the type of stage show right. where you can get on stage with anybody. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a musical performance. No. You have the type of stage show that you can actually get into a boxing ring. You can walk onto an ice hockey. And, uh, you know, uh, it into doesn't a, like, matter. You can walk into an ice hockey arena. You can do just, hell, you can... You can stand outside a, a barbecue and just <laughs> watch this, whatever, man. And that that's that 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 has to be a great feeling that you can just get on stage with any anybody in any genre and do your thing and get paid for what you love doing. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I appreciate it, Willie. But you know, I'm gonna tell you, like, it, and it and it really, I think the part about it that makes it the best for me is that it never has anything to do with money. Like, I toured with Prince from 99 all the way until he passed. What? Me and Prince toured from 99 to him transitioning. I was probably with him maybe a month or two before he passed. We performed in Baltimore when it was a riot. Because he was very... He was, he was an activist on, on, on a very subtle level and he would use his music and his relationships and his conversation even as he got older to share a lot of his point of views like owning the master you know he would we would go around teaching young brothers and sisters and artists who would come out about owning your master instead of he say you should own the master instead of the master owning you what do you think about all these artists uh, selling their masters now. They're selling their publishing. Actually, they're selling their publishing to these companies. What, what do you What do you think about that? You know, I don't know anybody's financial situation. You know what I mean. And I always take that into consideration. You know, your family could be sick. Your mom could need some help. You know what I mean. So, I think decisions are made based on individual circumstances. So. I never look at it as a collective, but I think if you have the ability to hold on to it and you could pass it on to your family, I think that that would be a wise decision. Or if you took it and turned it into something else and made it an even greater investment, then it makes sense too because now you know you took this thing you naturally had and turned it into something else. Like I'm not... I have this ability and I look at life like this. I like to be attached but unattached to things because I think that a lot of these things that we become so attached to, you know, sometimes you may need to let them go because sometimes everything ain't meant to hold on to. But everybody's circumstances is different and everybody feels a certain way about their music or their creation. With me, with the masters, you know, I paid for all of the stuff that was done. And then years later, you know, I gave Rick half of the master. Hmm. I gave him half of the master. He was just looking at the master for Lottie. He died. I said, no, no, so you got the half of the master, both of them. Even the song Freaks with Lil Vicious, I gave him half of the master. The brother um, Unique, who I did song uh, when I did AOI, who was a part of the chant idea, you know, I gave him ownership like, you can't take none of this with you, Willie. None of this ain't, what are we going to do? I mean, you might as well share it. Like, why is it that you're trying to take it all? You know what I mean? Even with Will and Barry, you know, I'm setting them up so that they can have some of it. I just feel like we, if your circumstances put you in a position where you need to take this and change the conditions of your life so you can have quality of life because I think that's what this whole experience is about. I think at the end of this experience, we want to say we had quality of life. What's quality of life? Your health, mentally, physically, spiritually, 
your relationship with your children or your wife or your significant other or whomever you with, your relationship with your brothers, your sisters, your family, your friends, the people that you grew up with, that you feel solid with, the relationship between other races of people because they are on this planet, whether we believe it or not, they are multiple mm. races, so <laughs> you can't exclude them. You know, your relationship with nature, your relationship with God, if that's what you believe in, your relationship with money. If you want nice things, you want a car, you want a house, you want this, you want that. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. But I think when it becomes overwhelming and that becomes your God, that's when it's a problem. When you start, when you when you thinking about going to buy a car and your brother has mental ill problems or something, or he has autism, and you might need to hire someone else to come and help take care of him. And you rather buy the car than to look out for him. Or you got a physical problem, and you rather buy the car than to handle your physical problem, then I think it's a problem. Well, maybe you got to buy the car to get to the doctor's. Well, <laughs> well, let's buy a little car. Don't buy a Bentley to get to the doctor. You're pulling up in the doctor say, I needed this. I needed this Bentley. I couldn't get to this doctor without this Bentley. <laughs> well, you know, if you if you can if you're gonna cry in a Lamborghini, you know, what, what, that was uh, some type of uh, video that was floating around uh, <laughs> that was asking women did they would rather would they rather cry in a Lamborghini or a Honda <laughs> or something like that. And it was, well, I guess well, I don't want to. Most of them were like, yeah, you know, I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini. Well, what about not crying at all? <laughs> I'd rather not cry at all, <laughs> man. man it's That's probably, funny. Uh, ha- have you seen the the new edition shows? Any of the new edition concerts? I just went and seen them, man. Okay, so did you see Bobby dancing and then he stopped? Yeah, like he just gave up on dance. He waved it off. And like, man, like I, ain't, I ain't finna do this. Shit. Right, I, I ain't doing this shit no more. Like, right. No, yeah. he did it. Like, I ain't messing with y'all. I ain't right. messing with y'all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, now that's a dancing perspective. Okay. Now, uh, like Bobby. You mentioned Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. And Big Daddy Kane has dance elements in his performance, right, like you. But he pulled back on yeah. some of them, like he that pulled split. back. And this is what I, yeah, he pulled back <laughs> on the split. I talked to Big Daddy Kane yesterday, and he told me about that. He said he said he, said he wanted to do the split, but he thought about it. He said, Nah, I ain't, said, go, I ain't going there. Nah. Do, do you having uh, dancing Big being Daddy. a huge part in 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 your performance? Right. Uh, has the time come, you know, you're getting up in age, you know what I'm saying? You still look good. You still mm-hmm. be performing and you're doing right. your thing. But has the time come to where your body sometimes betray you? No. Hey, is that good? No. You still got it like that. Brother, you're I'm feeling sorry. good. So, so so, you ain't got the icy hot zone in, in the dressing room no. after after you do your show? No. No. You ain't, in, you ain't, you're not in there holding, catch, trying to catch your breath. P- people trying to meet you, uh, d- no. meet, meet you, and they got to wait. Your manager no. outside the door say, hold on, wait. Nah. Let him get his stuff together. Nah. You're not doing, <laughs> you're not doing none of that. <laughs> funny as that. No, no, okay. no, no. I can't. I look, and I'm not saying it from any ego perspective, but like I tell you, man, your health is your wealth, and you get wealth from your health. And I really know that formula work. So I'm sharing this formula around the world. Like I have a foundation with a doctor called, his. I call him Hip Hop Doc, but his name is Dr. Williams, and he's from Nigeria. And we got this thing called Hip Hop Public Health. It is a foundation that we created a long time ago, 13, 14 years ago. We go to schools and teach kids about, you know, what to eat, exercising, going to play, not being on your video game, making a move. And then we go and teach them tools, back to the tools. Because childhood obesity is crazy, man. It's crazy. Willie, it's crazy. Are little kids, kids receptive? Little, oh, yes, because we use hip-hop in a way to teach them. And we got the beat rocking and the rhyme. So he gives me the information. I'll write something with the information and make it slick. For example, like, I don't know if you see, but there's this overwhelming impact of strokes that's hitting everybody. Stroke is like at the top of the, you got diabetes, you got high blood pressure, and you got heart disease, but stroke is is a very big thing happening. As you know, We've had 
a lot of artists that have suffered from this. So what we would do, or what I did, is I'll come up with the things that you need to see to identify a stroke, and I'll make it slick. So I'll say F is for the face, because you see the face droop. A is for the arm. You can feel something in the arm. Um, S is for the speech. The speech will start to slur. T is for the time. Time to do what? Call 911. So then we take these kids and we do we do this with them at the schools and we have Easy AD and Artie Green and these artists who I know are really solid guys going there, thousands of kids, hundreds of thousands of kids. One day, a kid's grandmother was having a stroke and he took that formula that I gave him <sighs> And cool. saved his grandmother's life. That's too cool. Man. And it happened more than once. And he took these tools, saved his grandmother's life, and now, you know, he he was the guy who, you know, his grandmother loved him, but she loved him even more because she got him to the hospital, got her to the hospital before it can get to that level where there was no return. Because the stroke is the number one disabilitating disease in the world. And when you have a stroke, you're never the same. What's the name of your foundation again? It's called Hip Hop Public Health. Hip Hop Public Health. You right. are the new Sesame Street. <laughs> because, you know, that, right. that was right. the cool thing about Sesame Street, That's man. Right. Like, it made you want to learn. Like, even, well, let me put it like this. It made you want to watch it. Right. And you found yourself learning stuff, like, not even realizing that you were actually learning things. Right. right? And that was the cool thing about it. Like, because kids, you know, like... When they get involved outside of school, they really don't want to be learning. Right. They don't want to learn. They want to have fun. Right. So you made you found a way to make it fun. Made it a lot of learn. fun. That's dope. And they, and they love it. And then I'm and then now I'm talking to and then I'm talking to their parents and we're having another conversation. We're talking about getting a checkup. You know, like. What is what's so bad about? I mean, I know everybody's afraid to get a checkup, but think about what happens if you don't. You know, an ounce of prevention beats a ton of cure. If you run around here and you're hiding from yourself and you don't check yourself out, you're gonna you're, there's gonna be a consequence. You know, we lost Kango, and much respect to him and his family. He had colon cancer. He was on the phone talking to me before he transitioned, and he told me, he said, Dougie, I want you to make sure you tell everybody to get checked. He said this was avoidable. That's what he told me. Then you got brothers that got prostate cancer. Nobody want to talk about it. Or no, don't have prostate cancer. They don't get their prostate checked to see if there's something wrong with their prostate. When you're getting a little older, you got to go take a, you got to urine. And you know, you're wondering, why is it so hard for me to urinate? What's going on? Well, why don't you just check it out? So if you check it out, you can prevent yourself from having prostate cancer. Or you're wondering why your mouth is dry all the time, or you're feeling certain symptoms. Hey, one time this brother, DJ Hollywood, the first MC in hip hop, and that's a whole nother story, but he's the first. He came to my house because I learned from him. He came to my house. He said, man, Dougie, my eyes is blurry, man. Yo, I don't know what's going on, man. I'm driving down the street. It's like the whole street is kind of blurry. Really. I turned around. I said, yo, let me, let's, I said, gee, go get the sugar test. Go get the little sugar tester. Tested his sugar. Sugar was like at 500, man. I said, yo, you need to go to the doctor right What's now. What's normal? Normal is 100 within maybe 90, depending on the levels, but it should never drop lower than that, maybe 110, 100. It, it, it fluctuates throughout the day according to what you eat. But 500 or that kind of number is an emergency. When he came in there, they put him on insulin and they said, yo, you know, you, you can lose your eyes from diabetes. You see what I'm saying? People get their toes cut, their legs cut off. You know, I got another friend of mine. He He's staying in Virginia. He had diabetes, he, he's had diabetes and then he, they told him he had it. He kept eating certain things that he should not have been eating. Willie, up in there, they found him. His daughter was calling for him, couldn't, couldn't get him on the phone, sent the ambulance up there. His, his sugar was 1,000 or 1,200. They took him to the hospital. They said, we got to take two of your toes. 
he called me back. He said, yo, I don't know, man. Yo, yo, they took two of my toes. This is crazy. It's my dude I went to high school with. He said, they took two of my toes. I said, yeah, man. I said, that's crazy. He said, yeah, man. He said, and then he started trying to make a joke like, yeah, you can call me Yoda, um, Yoda now. You know, he say that. And I was like, yeah, okay. I said, I'm glad you're in good spirits. I said, but you know, you got to make some lifestyle changes. 